Well, thank you. I would like to thank the organizers for letting me talk about this. Uh, this is uh, more on the financial engineering, um, not on mathematics, but it's a, a joint work with people from uh, an institute in, in the Santa Catarina. And uh, it's about this uh, problem of forecasting prices in electricity markets. It's a, a problem everywhere because we need uh, energy and the energy must be affordable and we need to know if uh, there is some kind of shocks, the risk of having shocks. And uh, the way we can model that is to, helps to forecast the risk of big jumps in prices that can make uh, our lives very difficult because getting energy at affordable costs is becoming more and more difficult because we, we need energy, for example, for example, to solve this uh, uh, cloud computing and also to solve uh, this AI, this lar large language models, to train these models. And uh, this, it has uh, a lot of literature on models trying to forecast, forecast this, uh, the way we, th these prices, okay. And uh, now, artificial intelligence emerged as a potential competitor of uh, uh, stochastic modeling because it's, it can mimic the, it can mimic the, the, how can I say, it's, it's kind of a regression uh, technique, but it's, it incorporates some nonlinearities. But the problems that arise with uh, artificial neural networks that it tends to overfit the data. So it's, the, it's um, how can I say, it's difficult to incorporate uncertainty in the, in the model. Okay, and uh, when we look at a, um, a real problem with real data, we have to incorporate, for example, the, that, that prices can have problems, can, can have some uh, kind of, uh, uh, are influenced by climate, by another issues like the, some economic variations, and the way that it influenced the price is difficult to model. And uh, now, this, if you choose a good artificial neural network model, it can help to make this, um, this uh, map from this covariates to prices easier. Uh, this is a, about the data set, so we, let me show the, the data set here. And we have three covariables and prices. And some covariables uh, present a clear uh, seasonal pattern. And uh, you want, we want to map these three covariables to prices. This INA is about the, the level of reservoirs in, because Brazil has a large hydro, uh, hydroelectric generation power. And we have this carga that is related to the power demand, and this IPCA is about the economy, it's about uh, inflation. And you want to map all three, these three um, covariables to prices. I don't know why the pointer is not working. I, I, okay, ah, now it's working. So this is just uh, the analysis of the correlation of these covariables here with prices. And we see that, for example, the, the level of the reservoirs is negative. The, 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 it's basically negative, the, 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 the correlation. But the others, we have a lot of fluctuations. And the, the problems that we, ha we had this, uh, the COVID pandemic here, <coughs> and uh, that, that caused some mess in the data sets. But here and here, we have more stable or close to stable things, but, but here the correlation became almost zero or positive at some points with this INA. 
that is related to the, the reservoir levels that must be negative correlated with prices. The larger, is, the, larger the, the reservoir level is, prices must be lower, must be small. Okay. So just the, the correlation between, now we are analyzing the, the factors, the number of, of uh, random factors in the, in the prices, just a, an APCA analysis. So we have four, four uh, forward prices, four forward contracts that are like, we want to buy electricity for one month or two months. And we have these contracts that, that delivers the electricity or an amount of electricity for one month or two months ahead. Okay, we cannot buy electricity now if you are big players in the market. And uh, <clears throat> some data issues, but about the model. In general, what people use to model electricity prices? In general, they use this, um, this kind of ornstein ullenbach model that is a uh, mean reverting model. People sometimes use jumps, and it's, and, uh, but we want to make something different. We, we make, we take the price in the log scale and divide into two, um, two terms. The first term is this is stochastic part, but we also use this uh, term to incorporate the influence of the covariables in the price. But to model that, we must use some kind of model, some kind of regression model, and the, the regression model that we choose is a, an artificial neural network. And uh, to train this, uh, this, this model, we use directly the, 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 the prices and then with the residual of the model projections, the, 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 the artificial neural network predictions, we train the, or calibrate the stochastic model. This stochastic model more or less easily to calibrate because it's just used like a, a Ito's formula to evaluate the, the expected values and we calibrate using the expected values. Have only three parameters. Uh, let me show, so, okay, so this is just the, the error. Use Tihonov type regularization to calibrate the stochastic model. And the artificial neural network is trained with, um, with uh, some kind of uh, regularization technique, this Bayesian training. But what? I want to show are this calibration, the errors, and uh, the evolution of the errors are this. So what can I say is that we have this in sample error that is just comparing the model predictions with the price that you use it to, to train or to estimate the model. And this is the error out of sample. So we make predictions about nine months ahead and compare with the observed values and calculate the L2 distance. And we see that this is a big jump here because we had uh, some kind of outliers, but the error is uh, more or less stable. And uh, <clears throat> this is the one day ahead predictions. This is a comparison with the model with the neural networks and the model just with the SDE. So in general, the model with the SDE tends to, be, to have a, a better prediction, but it's, it seems to be just a, a shift of the, the prices that you observe. Okay. And uh, this is the, the relative error of the predictions at each month. So we start to observe at the day zero, and we uh, predict one month ahead, two months ahead, and so on, until nine months. And see the relative error of these uh, predictions. And this is the, since we, we make these predictions many times, we 
we have some statistics of these uh, errors, and this is the, the, median, the median values of the errors. So we have about 10% of error in the second month, and so on. And uh, when we compare, when we use the neural network to incorporate the covariables into the model predictions, the error stabilizes about 10%. But when we use the directly, only the ST to predict prices, in general, the error increases more or less linearly. Not, not so linearly, but we have this increase in the prices. This is what we observe. But it's, it's linked with the, uh, because the, the expected value keeps um, more or less the, the shape of this, uh, let me see, see here, have this, uh, because of this part, when we take the, the expected value of, of this uh, SD. Okay. But one of them, this is the, some, some pictures of the, the predictions when we use the neural networks and we use only the SD. We see that the model, this is the expected or the expected value of the SD and the, these envelopes are the standard deviations of the predictions. In general, when we use the neural networks, the model tends to incorporate the, these movements that are caused, for example, differences or seasonal changes in the reservoir levels or some ki kind of perturbation that, that's caused by inflation. So it's helped. So including these covariables make predictions more, um, more uh, accurate. But we must test if these predictions are better than the, the so-called naive forecast. That's just repeating the price or the, repeating the pr price of the past season or the past year. And uh, we must test if the, these predictions are statistically uh, significantly better than the, the naive forecast. And that, that is what we did. And here we showed that, that during the pandemic, it is difficult to, to beat the, the naive forecast because the price behaved more or less like a, a random walk uh, in general. But, and uh, the influence of the covariables was, was low in the, the price formation. And, um, <clears throat> but after we have some, although we had some outliers in general, the prediction using the neural network or including the information that the covariables have in the, the price formation was significant. So the, the predictions were significantly better than the predictions made by, by the naive forecast. And uh, these are also some, uh, the, these are the, the p-values of this of these uh, predictions. We have this, uh, so this is the, the significance of these predictions. There are not so many predictions, but we have some. And uh, what, what does it have uh, to be with the, this conference? That in general, we have this, these models. And uh, what's the, 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 the big problem here? We have memory. So we must incorporate memory into the models. So neural networks and uh, other kinds of, of models that, for example, involve graphs and other structures for the net networks must account for memory. And uh, also this, the way that memory uh, influence the data change with time. So we have this, uh, it seems that the, the, the the distributions are, are not um, time constant, so they change with time. And we have to, to see how the data 
indicate the way this, uh, this change in time works. And this is the, the, the big difficulty in mathematical finance, I think, when we want to not, not just want to predict price, but want to predict this, uh, the risk of loss. And uh, if you want to make accurate predictions of this risk of loss, we must understand the way that the, the memory or the way that uh, this dependencies, not only in time, but also in this covariates, uh, works. And uh, that, that's, I think, these new models that are emerging, not only these uh, neural networks that like, like Perceptron, or, but much more uh, recent models are, can, can be very useful to understand the way this, this works. So thank you. Time for one quick question, or if not, we can take the questions offline and ask ministers later, uh, because it's already time for our next speaker, who should be, oh, he is. <laughs>